Hi, I'm Adam Pennell, Shropshire Lad, and I'm here today to cook some festival fare for Hobtoberfest. We're going to make some surf and turf sliders with some awesome Denver steak. We're going to melt cheese all over it. We're going to put it onto a smoky beer brioche bun that we're going to make using this awesome Hobgoblin Ruby. Uh, and then we're going to serve it up with a beer battered prawn on the top. Let's get to it. dirty onions here so I've got these red onions and literally all we're going to do is throw them in the fire until they get really black and charred and gnarly and they're going to look like the charcoal that's in there but what will be inside will be the sweetest most delicious onion because all of the moisture gets pushed out and obviously it allows the sweetness to come through It'll be incredible okay so I'm going to talk you through how to make these beer brioche buns I'm going to take 600 grams of strong white bread flour 100 grams of butter rub the butter into the flour like as if you were making a crumble then we're going to make a little well in the middle of the flour, pop in an egg, some fast action yeast, top it up with the beer, uh, a pinch of salt, and then just mix together until we've got a nice soft bread dough. Give it a little bit of a knead, let it rise, knock it back, make the buns, pop them in the old smoker, and rubbish your father's brother. And I'm just going to get my hands in there and just rub the butter. You want all that butter, you don't want lumps in there, you want it all to be incorporated into that flour. I'm going to pop in some fast action yeast, one sachet, which is normally about 12 grams if you're using it from a pot. I'm going to crack an egg in, and then I'm going to start working the egg and the yeast together. You can just incorporate a little bit of flour at a time. Just That's the key really, to make sure it's nice and smooth, slowly letting that flour come in. We're going to go in with the beer, going further and further around into the flour, pulling more flour in as you go, until it comes around something that resembles a bread dough. Okay, so you're just going to get your hands right underneath the dough and fold it over and catch all the, the flour that's left in the bottom of the bowl and then just keep it, push the dough down into it and you're kind of kneading it in the bowl until all of that flour is incorporated into the dough. The butter's going to help to keep this nice and soft until we get to the stage where we can take it out of the bowl. I'm just going to work it on a surface for I don't know, five minutes. Okay, so now this dough is nice and smooth. You see, like that. I'm just gonna fold it into a ball, pop it back into its bowl. Just gonna cling film it up. And then we're gonna let that prove for about an hour until it's doubled in size. So in order to make the perfect slider roll, I use 60 grams of the dough. If you weigh out the rolls, you'll get even rolls. Otherwise, you're going to have all different size rolls and it just doesn't look anywhere near as good. That's 62, I'm happy with that. One or two grams either side isn't going to hurt. And then, make a ball, the palm of your hand, just roll it around until you get a perfect little bun. We've got our six rolls evenly spaced in the uh, pan here. So I'm just going to cover them with some cling film for a second proof. It should probably take only about half an hour, 40 minutes, because they're much smaller. The warmth uh, will get into them more quickly, and they should double in size, and they'll be ready to bake, which leaves me with enough time to have another beer. It's a festival after all, you know what I mean? Right then, so the buns have done their second proof. They're looking sweet. They've just connected a little bit. So we're just going to take the, uh, the cling film off now. We're going to glaze them with some egg and some sesame seeds, and then we're going into the Kamado to cook. We're going to take an egg. So I'm just glazing all of these. It's important not to get too much egg on, otherwise you're going to end up with the bun sticking to the pan. So you just want to just about coat the top, and this is just going to help the sesame seeds to stick, but also give it an awesome shine at the end. This is a piece of oak whiskey barrel, uh, which we're going to just drop into the coals. It's going to create some smoke, so we have like a smoky flavour to the bread as well. So that goes in. So this is a deflector plate here, which is going to stop our buns from burning underneath. Uh, acts as a barrier between the fire and the bread. Uh, I've got an old metal tray here as well, which I'm going to 
pour some beer into to create some smoke, which really helps the buns to be super soft and not split, or hopefully not split. I'm just gonna drop a little bit of beer in there. It doesn't need to be too much. Lid on. Grill on. Lid down, keep an eye on them. Woo okay, I'm gonna give these onions some attention now because one of them is sticking his hand up in the air telling me I'm done, I'm done because the cores pop right out and that means that loads of that moisture has come out of the onions. They're gonna be sweet and delicious. So I'm gonna just take them off, pop them on a, a plate, let them cool down so that I can handle them in about 10 minutes time. I feel the need to have a little peek here. Just get a bit more beer in there. Second bit of steam, we're just going to make sure that they don't split across the top. We want it to be nice and shiny and smooth. It's going well. Okay, let's talk about steak. So today we are going to be using uh, a cut that you don't see too often actually. It's a Denver steak. So this comes out of the chuck, which normally you think of chuck is uh, like something that would be turned into mince or uh, stewing steak. But this particular muscle runs through, it's the bottom end of the ribeye. So that is like a small cap of the ribeye, essentially. You're gonna slice this up into sort of like inch thick steaks, uh, season it, let it come up to room temperature, and then we're gonna cook it directly on the coals. So we're gonna, we call this dirty steak. So there's gonna be no grills. And if you want to sear a steak properly, you need heat. And I just love to cook this way, it's amazing. Can't wait to show you this. If I was going to cook this in a pan uh, or on the grill, I'd probably hit it with a little bit of oil now, but that's not going to help with the ash because we're cooking it straight in the coals. So all we're going to do now is hit it with some sea salt and that's it. Obscene amounts of salt. Okay, so these are ready to go onto the coals now. They're nice and white, not too much ash, literally straight on there. recommend that you have a go at this but if you do please please make sure that you use quality British lumpwood charcoal if you're using imported stuff it's usually from the rainforest uh, it's unsustainable don't ever use briquettes for this either because it's full of chemicals just pure British lumpwood is what you want and you'll see how clean these steaks are there's no ash on them it's the way forward but make sure you sort of select some nice fuel Right, so it's really, really important that you let your steak rest. So that's gonna sit there probably for a little while because I've got a bit of work to do yet, but that's absolutely fine because at the end, they're gonna get hit with a little bit more beer and some steam, which will just warm them through again. Uh, the longer you can leave it to rest, the better, but at minimum, you wanna leave it for sort of half the amount of cooking time. Now, whilst the steak rests, we're gonna sort out these onions. So they've been sat in the coals probably for about an hour turned. You see they're all black on the outside. A lot of people think you throw them away, but inside, find the most delicious, sweet, caramelized onion. Just pops apart. Whoa, see how easy it pops? So I've just rough chopped these onions. They're gonna go into this pan with some butter and some of the lovely Hobgoblin Ruby and a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's gonna make the most incredible base. When they've reduced down, on those brioche buns, you blow your brains out, mate. So good. Right, so we're gonna make the cherry that's gonna go on the top of this surf and turf slider now with these king prawns, which I'm gonna shell, gonna drop into a lovely beer batter using the ruby, and into hot fat and it's just going to be in on a skewer which is going to be on the top of the slider and i've got a little bit of a fetish for a fried prawn tail if you haven't tried it it's like crisp delicious and it also looks cool so just leaving the tail on like that okay so the key to this is to add a little bit of the beer at a time mix it into the flour if you put too much in you're going to struggle to get the lumps out so just working it in a little bit at a time and it becomes a paste the consistency you're looking for is like a thick milkshake. 
So you're just going to keep adding it. You'll see that it's just slowly coming together. You can put the beer down and, and just work that. Okay, so prawns are shelled. I'm just going to give them a little hit of some salt, like so. Then take a prawn into the flour. Now the flour is going to help the batter to grab hold of the prawn. Then we're going to go into the batter there. Now this is a little bit tricky, this next bit. We're going to try and get a skewer through it. Through it. So I'm going to pin it down to the board like this and just pop the skewer in like that and then slide it all the way to the top and repeat. These, I mean, I have no idea how hot this oil is because I'm cooking over fire, but I'd normally if it was a fire, I'd do them about 180 and then it'd take literally about a minute to cook. As soon as you can see, they've gone pink. Golden on the, uh, on the batter, whip them out. Looks good, eh? Done. All right, so get this steak sliced up now. It's beautifully pink inside. Quite rare, but that's fine because it's going to go back on the griddle to finish and the steam will continue to cook it. I'm going to add the pepper now. I didn't put a pepper on at the beginning because obviously they were cooked on the coals and that would have just made the pepper burn and that uh, makes the pepper bitter and not very nice. So I always put it on at the end. It's a good tip for cooking steak in any situation. Put the pepper on at the end. Though. Okay, so now we're just going to put a little pile of onions for each of the sliders onto this hot plate. Go one, two, three. Going to load each of them up with some steak. One, two, three bits for each slider will be plenty, I think. Now we're going to hit it with some mature cheddar. Right, the interesting bit now, we're going to pop the lids on. One, two, three, four, and the last two. And then we're going to hit it with a final bit of beer, which is going to steam the buns, melt the cheese, and make everything absolutely, insanely delicious. Hit it with a cloche, couple of minutes, boom. Just going to put some English mustard onto the ba these bases, just because I can't not have English mustard with steak and onions, man. Okay, that should be, they've been under there for two or three minutes. I think we're going to be good to go to serve these. Yeah, man, that cheese is all melted. Okay. And as promised, the cherry on the top is our king prawn. And boom, there we have it. So, my beer brioche sliders with rest Denver steak, beer onions, and a beer batter king prawn on the top. I cannot wait to taste this. So I'm gonna do it right now. I'm really happy with that. The bun is so soft, but flavor of that beer really, really comes through. So rich and delicious. Right, I'm Adam Pennell, Shropshire Lad. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the recipe. Please let us know what you think in the comments below and tell us what you're gonna be eating during Hobtoberfest. Cheers. <laughs>